Welcome, 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 welcome to the Olympian table. And we've got the Olympics going on in Paris. And uh, all seems to be going well at the moment. But we talk about all things bright and beautiful and all things that aren't quite so bright and beautiful. So I'm here with my friend Kay this morning. How are you doing, Kay? I am good. So anything controversial we'll talk about and anything not controversial we'll talk about. The first thing we're going to talk about is a bit of really good news where the journalists that have been held in Russia, um, a deal has been agreed um, this morning, uh, August the 1st, uh, President Biden uh, basically has negotiated a release uh, with Russia, uh, a swap for the journalists that have been held. Um, there was back in New York City, colleagues and friends of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershwitz are celebrating his release and imminent return home. But I believe there were a number of prisoners that was released. Um, but then anyway, the, the, the ordeal is over. I don't know who we actually uh, swap them with. The deal frees 24 prisoners being held in six countries, 16 detainees from the West, and eight who are returning to Russia. So, as always, Russia make up all these uh, espionage um, threats, if you want to, or they jail people, and all they are is just journalists, you know, trying to do their job. But, you know, what's your comments on it, Kate? What do you think about it? I actually think it's uh it's great news. Um, it's good. It's fabulous news for the families. Yeah. Especially with Thanksgiving coming up, we haven't got long towards Thanksgiving. Time to sort of catch up. I find, I think that it's so in, it's so interesting to me that um that so many journalists have been getting imprisoned for the past couple of years. It's been happening a lot um, in other countries, and I'm just kind of like. You know, they put their lives on the line a lot just to get information for us. So I'm really happy. Do you know how long he was in? He was uh, imprisoned for. Uh, I believe it was quite a time. A few years, right? Oh no, I think it was longer than that. But it doesn't say on the article. But I believe it was sort of. Two to three years. Yeah, right? Which is, uh, can you imagine? Especially because it's Russian prison and, you know. Smelly and ratty. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I'm just glad that, you know, he's out of there. I think it's a, a nice thing that Biden's done. Continue and hopefully, I think Biden might be the type of guy that you know, Jimmy Carter negotiated a lot of um, these type of deals, you know, to free prisoners and different things. I mean, Jimmy Carter's 99 now, um, but hopefully, you know, when Biden takes a back seat after the election, then. Hopefully, I think Biden will continue to do this because he's very, very well connected, you know, throughout the thing. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully that will be the case. So, what we got up next, Miss Kay? So, now we have a video that I think is uh, pretty funny. We do think it's funny. <laughs> uh, just about how our elections are so different, right, than around the world because you're from the uk so how long does the uk typically last for uh for their election well, let, let people frame? watch the video and then, then we can discuss it okay let's see so we have this here <clears throat>
So that's uh <laughs> that's what ours is. So I mean in the UK normally with the election they name the elections every five years. Uh, it's normally completed within I would have said a month. Mm -hmm. About a month. It so. doesn't go on as long as it it does now. Here's the issue that you've got here, all right? You have the election on, is it the first Tuesday, or you have it on the same day every four years? Mm -hmm. It's not the same in the UK. We have it every five years, so that the maximum time that you have the election, that you can have it in any time within the last 50 years, you understand? Mm. So that's what stunned everybody in the UK this year when they announced that they would have the election on July 4th. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. You know, strange day to have the election on. It's not that they care that it's, you know, Independence Day in the US. But <laughs> they did it to get back at us. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll have uh, hot dogs and hamburgers uh, next year so they can... <laughs> Feel a little bit more American. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But um, it, it's a good point. You know, the lady on the TikTok video, um, that's where you got it from, wasn't it? TikTok? Uh, YouTube, but yeah. YouTube, okay. Was basically, she's very, very true in what she's saying. Yeah. So. It, it's far too long here, and it sort of adds to the animosity that I think of the whole thing. Yeah, everybody. I mean, um, you're only talking about that because, for two you years. You get distracted from what you're doing in your life. Yeah. It should be distracted. Do they have political merch overseas? You know how we have merch like you can, like you have the st the stokes yeah, that you yeah, put yeah, in the yeah, ground. Yeah, you have the shirts and the hats. Not the not so much the shirts and the hats. Yeah. But you might have signs that you might put outside your house to support. Yeah. I thought it was I thought it was funny. I made a joke. I I was like, if you have political merchandise as a hat or a shirt, you're in too deep. <laughs> you might be in a little bit too know. deep. I mean, you know, it, during the election I've got stuff outside my house. Well yeah, for I'm, I mean for the house that's fine, like, you know, to show your support. But I mean like if you're just walking around with shirts on yeah. or you have the hat you're full you're fully Biden out or you're fully trumped out you have the you know the trump bible and the trump shoes and everything i there's think not, you're in too there's, deep there's not that type of <laughs> there's not that uh type of attack yeah but his, i think that's yeah. just a, it's a little bit too much you got you got to relax if that's you <laughs> you know you you can be supporting your friend's business or something take your wife out to a nice dinner do not <laughs> buy that those Trump shoes for a thousand dollars, or the Bible. Um, but we also we're going to proceed how we said we was going to proceed. But there's something I just put in that I want to talk about at the end. Okay. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, with elections, it's not much of a run runoff. But I think the problem is in the in the U.S. We've always got the elections every what four years. Mm -hmm. And it's always in November. Is it the first week of November or November the fifth? I can't remember, but it is in or November. The seventh or something, but yeah. it's or the first week or whatever. I don't know if it's determined by the day or whether it's determined by the date. You know, sh share some love for me because <laughs> I'm still practicing being an American citizen. But um, uh, we have, so we kind of were going through uh speaking of the election and we just have a little a couple of updates um just in general right now we technically don't have a democratic nominee to run against trump um but they are thinking i mean more than likely it's going to be kamala so this article that we have here um i think she's going to be great i think she will honestly be a very very strong Democratic presidential nominee. Yeah. Um, it's, okay. it's interesting how, in the past, Mr. Trump has called the black. And, um, what was the name of the organization you see? The, the, uh, the black, uh, the black journalists. Journalist reporters. 
And then yesterday he turned around and says, well, you know, is she black or is she Indian? You know, all of a sudden now she's Indian. <laughs> you know, so it, it was interesting. And the person that was doing the interview was very much on point. I thought very, very smart. Uh, you know, and some of the comments that Trump made was, oh, well, you're just nasty people. Yes, because he couldn't any, get any back. In position where he gets, then all of a sudden you're a nasty person. Which to me is just nuts. I can't go around through my life with anybody that, and there's plenty of people that don't agree with me, and say, you're just a nasty person. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty. It makes me laugh, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, it's, it's very silly. So, so come on, as an African American young lady, what's your opinion on it? Um, I think it'll be interesting. Well, actually, you... what's interesting with your comments is your mother's in prison, mm -hmm. and you're African American as well. Mm -hmm. So, what's your opinion on it? I just hope that she, um, I hope she does well. I. I'm very excited to see what her campaign is under because I think that I think it's hard because the thing about having a vice president is that a lot of the times they don't get to show what they're about most what they do behind the scenes. Yeah, you don't get to know you get you don't get to notice that. So I I am interested to see, you know, what her campaign's going to stand on. So that's what I'm waiting for. I want to know what's, you know, what's kind of going on, what she's going to attack, how she's going to, you know, uh, think, run. Basically, I think I think it's backfired on a, a lot of the Republicans because they said, "Oh, Biden's old and Biden's tripping upstairs." And he's got dementia and he's got this. But now all of a sudden that Kamala, Camilla, Kamala, Kamala. Mm -hmm. she's on the scene, all of a sudden everything's flipped back. Mm -hmm. She's smarter, she's quick. I mean, it's nice to know that there's somebody, you know, on the young side of it that I think will attract. But apparently they reckon that one of the factors that's going to come into this election is there's a high number of people that are biracial in this country mm -hmm. and they reckon that is going to be a high factor of voters coming in and voting for Camilla. Mm -hmm. Kamala. Is it Kamala? Correct me. It's Kamala. Yeah. Kamala. Okay. And if I'm, you're saying it with an Indian to me, accent. It's a breath of fresh air that she's coming in because she's smart I think she's got a lot of Republicans worrying in their pants. I think they might be excreting something out their pants at the moment. <laughs> but, you know, to be perfectly honest, I really think she's doing a great job. And I think she's the ideal person to take them on. Um, and I, I don't think they know how to take her on because they don't think plan to Biden, dementia, uh, falling upstairs, not capable of doing the job. And all of a sudden, the focus has changed. And I don't think they know how to handle that. Yeah. What, 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 where, do they, where do they hit her from? What can they say that's negative about her? Yeah, you can't say anything really negative without kind of pushing uh, himself and, into a and corner. Like, like now, he doesn't want to debate her. Yeah. Well, he doesn't want to debate her because she's sharp. She'll, she'll knock him to six, mm -hmm. you know. She'll bring out all the statistics, which is what Biden should have done on the first debate, about, you know, how much he put on the debt. Yeah. And I think it's a, I really think it's a very, very good, um, I think it's great for the country that we've got somebody younger. Mm -hmm. um, I was sad that Biden had decided to do what he did, but after it sank in a little bit and you realize what all the implications are, I'm energized. You know, what did she raise? Like Two hundred million dollars? One hundred and seventy thousand supporters. Uh, yeah. For a campaign. I mean unbelievable numbers really. As I said, ten pieces of poop have shown in some of um, <laughs> Mr. Trump's diapers at the moment. Yeah.
So what are we moving on to? So now we just we're kind of talking about the Olympics because this is the Olympian table. So we want to go over how we're doing on the Olympics and just some, you know, kind of our favorite moments if you have any. So that's what we have here. We have the the medal standings right now. So in the United States at the moment at top. It wasn't yesterday, China. We're not the top. Uh, China is still the top. Uh, there. So I'm the one I've got. The United States as well. Well, we have 31 medals altogether, but China has the highest amount of gold. So China has 11 golds. France has eight. Japan has eight. Australia has seven, and we have six. Right. But we have 31 medals all across from gold, silver, and bronze. Um, so we are quite ahead in that aspect. So we, we are top for the amount of medals. I don't think anybody's catching up to us anytime soon. France has 27. And then China is behind the them with 22. Got, on the chart that I've got on my screen, mm -hmm. it's got the United States top. It's just going gold, I think. And then so. Yeah, so, um, we, so we are top for the amount of medals, but we're not top for gold medals. Right. So, but they're not yet. So they're, they're catching up. One of the things that upsets me about this Olympics is one, the French people defecating and then sound. I, I don't think that's been a good move because some of the events, I think one of the events has been cancelled because of that. And you've had people train for this for four years, they have to change the formatting of the event. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing that I really have a concern about is even back in 1984 when I did the Olympics, we did drug testing. And I've been told there's no drug testing this time around. And apparently China wow. in the past has been, they've been accused of taking drugs. So I find it, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard, that they're not doing drug testing. And I think drug testing is a big part of any sport. type of sport. Yeah. Because... They will use it to build muscle, um, you know, especially when you're talking about weightlifting, you know. I mean, you go to your local gym and you look at some of these guys and you think, yeah, what, you know, what drugs are you on? There, you know, there's a guy that actually goes around gyms and he's like, are you natty or not? So he's like, are you natural or <laughs> are you not? And so many people, they're like, no, I'm not natural. No, I'm not. And it's there's been a, a lax in drug regulation actually for sports recently there's um you know people it's just way more relaxed like even the rock is on testosterone and obvious well, steroids they, they banned russia for years for, for, for steroids drugs. exactly and so but now it's so weird people are they're not taking it as seriously which is i think is very very unfair because and one of the tactics that a lot of the, the communist countries were doing when we escaped from they would delay the menstrual type uh, cycles of the girls so mm -hmm. they didn't develop into women yeah so they had less fat so basically their power to weight ratio was less. Mm -hmm. And a typical example is, you know, air skaters when the guys are thrown into the girls around. Mm -hmm. You know, same with gymnasts. I'm going to say same with happens. gymnasts. Yeah. The other thing is that I just read a little article on my hero. She lives in Houston. Well, she lives in Springs, just outside of Houston. Simone Biles. Apparently she had a little hiccup this morning. And double parallel bars. Mm -hmm. I really hope it doesn't affect her too much. I'll be disheartened if she does, because I, I think she's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I think she did. Uh, you know, she's my and Miss have custody of Simone Biles on, on even bars, so she dropped to second place. She's trailing Rebecca on bar mm -hmm. and Kayla. I really hope that is, you know, it's not going to affect her too much because I think she's wonderful. I think Simone Biles 
She's absolutely incredible. She's a, a leader. Yeah. Uh, she's a fabulous example. You don't see her in the. You don't see her in the. You know, for doing bad things in the papers or, you know, anything else. I think she's an absolute. You gem. just see her husband saying dumb things. <laughs> What's that? I say you just see her husband saying dumb things. Yeah, but she. <laughs> you know. That's sort of what I like about. Not going to say, I don't want to miss them both. I've got two mm -hmm. different individuals, but that's what I like about you know, Taylor Swift, and that's what I like about Simone Biles. They, they're, they're never in trouble. Do you understand? They just, I think they set a good example, and I really think they are. You know, their leaders, hopefully, good examples for our children in America. And, you know, teenagers and just people in general. And I think we should be very, very proud of these young children. Yeah, they said that uh, Simone Biles um, is probably the greatest athlete in the world. Just she went 12 feet in the air, I think, for her um, when she performed not today but yesterday. Um, she jumped. She got so she cleared. She's four foot eight. And she basically cleared seven feet in the air, which is, I mean, that's twice her height for her to be uh, no that high. No power to weight ratio, like I said, must be incredible. Mm -hmm. But if you look at her body, you know that no drugs have been used mm -hmm. because you can see it's muscle. Yeah, she you know, She's developed muscle over the time. So, anyway. I want to bring something up next that's pretty sad. Uh, I didn't really discuss this with um, Kate. Can you bring up that one which says "Age arrested after machete fight in the South South mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is a actually. You see that? Mm -hmm. In England at the moment, we have a huge problem. Where is we have immigration problems just like we do in the US. And basically, we have migrant men that are coming in predominantly, uh, migrant youths. And basically, what's happening is they are coming out and fighting with machetes. The nickname for this is Chefing Up. Just like a chef. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what the youngsters are saying. They're going to chef one another up. And basically, I want to sort of bring this up for a reason. We've got this problem that's going in all the way over the UK at the moment. I really think it's going to be a problem. I don't know if anybody's heard on the. on YouTube or otherwise, that there was another one that I wanted to click. Can you bring up um, cbc.ca news world about the South Fork stabbing on the Taylor Swift flats? Can you bring it up? Okay. Mm -hmm. What happened was there was a group of young girls that were six and seven year olds and basically a 17 year old boy went in with a machete and killed three little girls. Basically, killed three little girls, and I think there were six or seven that was um, injured. I think there's some adults in there as well. And basically, there's been some riots that have been going on in England. What they're basically putting it down to is that you know they feel that um, there's an immigration crisis that's going on. In, it's actually starting in Africa at the moment because of the droughts, because of the problems and the wars in North Africa. What they're doing is they're coming from North Africa, they're going up to Italy, uh, then from Italy they're going through Europe. And then they're going into the various countries. Uh, Germany is closing down some of the mosques. 
uh, and I don't think that you know Muslims are bad people. There are some men. Um, I don't know. If don't know if they are Muslim, if you don't have a 17 year old, 17 year old guy with a staff who's little, little angels as far as I'm concerned, you know, whereas a Muslim, I suspect that he may be, um, but basically what was interesting is with this 17 year old boy, what they have disclosed is he was originally from a African country. Uh, no, sorry, he was born in the UK, but his parents were from Africa. So basically, he's a, a British citizen, but he was obviously brought up with, you know, he's sort of first generation English. There's been riots that have been going on all over the riots. There's been demonstrations that have been going on all over the UK. The last week, there was a huge one last weekend um, in Trafalgar Square, where it was like 10,000 people. And it was very orderly, in all fairness, until two things came into the march. One is um, alcohol. The second one is when the, the police appeared. Uh, a lot of aggression, just like the photo that you see on, you know, on here. I think something has to be done. I think, I think not just any particular. Can you see the go down to the photos of the the flowers of the children? Floral tributes are left to the victims of the deadly knife attack in Southport. Southport is in Liverpool, and I can guarantee you, Liverpudlians will not put up with this crap. Uh, Liverpool is a very very you know, tough and well-known city. It's very well known for its two football teams, Liverpool and Everton, and they will band together if stuff like this going on. Um, I hope that it's not a problem throughout the UK. I'm scared that it's going to be, but I do think Europe, America, and a lot of the countries we need to get together and have some sort of. Um, agreement to um, what we're going to do about illegals coming into the country. One of the problems that the UK have is illegals coming into the country with no payment, no official documentation. Um, so what they do is the UK government, they give them basically a, a social security number. They don't really know who they are. What the UK have been doing is putting them in up in hotels. The government's been paying, and then we've got all these veterans and other people on the streets. The government do not seem to be doing anything about it. Uh, it's costing millions of dollars for uh, the UK government, which they don't have. There's a lot of cities in the UK that are really deteriorating and deteriorating quickly uh, and I really feel that it's time for the politicians to stand up and see what they can do about this situation. Yeah. It's definitely not a happy situation. It's been happening um, quite a bit, you know, they're like over there, you guys' machetes are kind of like our guns. There was a 16-year-old. Well, here's the situation that I want to say in defense of guns. Okay, if somebody came at me with a machete, I'd like to have a gun. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I was going to say there was a 16 year old um, kid, or maybe he was 15, and he he liked a girl and he asked her out and she rejected him, and so he stabbed her on the bus. On the bus in the UK, he just so it's becoming a they're just a worse well, problem. Here's the problem as well. But it's a cultural problem because the guys that come in into the UK, I don't know if it's the Muslim faith, somebody needs to tell me what it is, but they don't like girls running in shorts 
if they're yeah, but this was not a if this wasn't I know, anyone. But that's what I'm saying. But there's been girls that have been stabbed with machetes, and they're just jogging along the streets. Yeah, but I'm talking about that. That is that, that's true. However, what I'm just talking about is this situation. He wasn't Muslim. They weren't Muslim. It wasn't anything to do with anyone Muslim. It was just him. He wanted. He liked this girl, and she rejected him, and he stopped her because yes, she sir. rejected him. So that's just a. It's one of those things where it's a mental health thing. This is in England. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a mental health. I think people don't know how to get their feelings across anymore. I don't, see, I don't think it's a mental health. I'm past that point now. I think it, it, there's a huge rise in the UK with knife crime. Yeah. Huge rise. And it's it's and it's just been, you know, I, I, I really think what ha what's has happened is the police have turned the back on it. The politicians have turned the back on it on the problem, you know, on the problems. And they really need to change their tactics somehow to, you know, get over the problem. Even I've in the lot. video that we saw with the eight kids um, attacking each other with machetes, it's there was a the police. police. Yeah, they're just standing there. He was there, just on his radio, not trying to help whatsoever. That, that's what I'm saying. They need to, you know, even if we give the police guns, I think that's it's at the point where. In the U, you know, in the UK, what have we have got? Batons, wooden sticks. You know, even at the time now where the British police start to carry guns, or at least tasers that shoot out. <laughs> at the very least, get the tasers. You know, the, absolutely. The, I think they taser have, guns. I think they have, I'm sure they have tasers, but I mean, sometimes they just stand back and they don't, you know, do anything. Yeah, I don't think that they're. They're not used to this type of crime either, you know. It's well, in that case, it's a training issue. Yeah, they need to be trained to. But, you know, I think it's the police's responsibility to keep people safe. Mm -hmm. And I think they need to keep up to date with the type of crimes that are out there. Yeah. When I went home to England three years ago, I went to drive my wife shown her where my father's business was hmm. he couldn't recognize it oh it just looked completely different completely different i mean there was all type of you know different types of shops there in that wasn't english shops do you understand mm -hmm. you know different nationalities um you know which was fine i mean there's an economy there and it's just driving the economy um but there was a lot of graffiti a lot of trash on the streets it just was, you know, and then when we drove down the street, somebody told us it's a no-go zone. You don't want to be there because it's full of the wrong color. Oh, my gosh. That is crazy. So there's different places of Birmingham where I'm from that, you know, there are ghettos. The lives are ghettos. You just don't get through. Yeah. You stay away from it. Let me ask you a question. Is anywhere in Houston that you can say that? Where you stay away from? Mm -hmm. Third Ward. Acres Homes. You think so? Yes. I think Third Ward is getting gentrified. Um, but because, because I'm in Third Ward all the time and I don't get problems. I see people with Walmart carts walking through the area, but none of them have ever approached me asking for money. Well, that's great. Even in my... I'm a woman, though, so that's also fairness, a big thing. There was one property I did view, and on the opposite corner, there was a corner store, and there was two guys sitting on the floor <laughs> that I didn't feel comfortable with them sitting on the floor. Yeah. There, when I first came here, my sister and I went to, we, had no, we didn't know anything about Houston. We went to a bar. We wanted to go out to a bar. And the Uber driver was like, oh, you're going to Friendly's? We were like, yeah, we're going here. And he was like, in Third Ward? And we're like, yeah. And he was like, okay, be safe, blah, 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 blah. He just gave us, like, the rundown. And then we're like, what? You know, because we looked it up, and we thought it was an okay place. And then we got there, we were like, oh, this is this is why he said that. This is So <laughs> probably Third Ward, probably Acres Homes. I probably would not go over so that area. Say, it's coming, though. 
Third Ward is being gentrified, yeah. Um, but I still would not approach there uh, by myself. Because even as a woman... I've got a client looking for a multifamily in the area that I've told you about mm -hmm. in Third Ward. Yeah. Because student housing demand in that area is very high. Yeah, because uh, it's next to uh, U of H. State University and U of H. Yeah, so that makes sense. But if you're... Uh, of course, those areas are going to be still on the nicer end because it's around the college. But if you go and you travel like too far out, if you go more it's 45, terrible. That's when it can get a challenge. Yeah, it's like ah. As you go from 288 and you move to the 45, that's when it can get a bit of a challenge. Yeah. And anyway, I, I guess that's it for today. That's all we have. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining the Olympian table. As always, the message is: please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. We want to thank you for joining. So, from Steve Williams, thank you very much. And from Kay, would you like to just say bye bye? Uh, I'll say adios. Adios, amigos. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, turn notifications, and thanks for joining us. We appreciate you.